everyone, my name is Monsel. Today we're going to talk about spot and stock hunting. Each year I hunt between 20 to 25 times with complete beginners as part of my sacred hunting organization. And when I do this, we spot and stock hunt so that it's more engaging, more exciting for participants. And personally, I'm a bow hunter. So I have a lot of experience, very concentrated in spot and stock hunting for most of my hunting career. And I think that's given me some great tips for you to use yourself. So as the name implies, the best bet for spot and stock hunting is finding a place where you actually can see. You need a line of sight. You want to be in a position where it's not super thick. This kind of environment with all these shrubs and bushes is really hard to do spot and stock hunting. This is much better for ambush style hunting. The best way to do spot and stock hunting is with some type of elevation change. Make sure the environment allows you a line of sight. Otherwise, spot and stock hunting is gonna be virtually impossible. So one of the most important parts of spot and stock hunting and the number one tip is get a field of fire. And what that means is if you know an animal might be moving into a certain area, set yourself up where they might move. So a deer moving through here might get into our field of fire where we have a shot. And that's really great for beginners for a few reasons. It's great because it allows us to be still and we can wait for that animal without moving a lot. It also allows us to get a really well distanced shot. You can use a range finder beforehand and figure out exactly your ranges in that field of fire. Tip number two is make some type of bah noise the moment before you're about to take a shot. Here's why. When these animals are moving, and especially when they're feeding, it can be really challenging to get the right shot unless you stop them in their tracks. Now the way that I do that is I make this noise when they're perfectly broadside, providing a great shooting opportunity. Because they're curious, they'll look up, and oftentimes that gives the beginners a few precious seconds to take the shot. Unfortunately, if you don't take the shot, you might have just shown them your location and it could be too late. So this is a little bit of a risk, but if you know that you're prepared, you can use this to get the perfect broadside shot. So the number one most important thing when spot and stock hunting is the wind. And the reason the wind is so important is because it sends scent to animals. And animals are very reliant on their sense of smell in order to navigate their environment. Here's why. An animal can understand the past and the present based on smell alone. I walk through this area and I leave a scent that the animal can tell is a few minutes old or a few hours old and therefore knows a little bit about the danger that they're in and the past and the present. So for any of you who have hunted in the mountains, this story might resonate in the worst possible way. I spent time in Idaho hunting for elk and I found an animal that was probably five, 600 yards away on a different mountain slope. We decided to go three full hours down the mountain, across streams, up the mountain and then come at the animal from above because we wanted to have good wind. Having the wind uh, coming into our face so that the animal can't smell us. We went through all that effort, all those hours, basically spent an entire afternoon because of the wind. That's how important it is. And at the last minute, the wind changed directions when I was about 40 yards from the animal and the bull elk, one of the largest I've ever seen, got up and ran away. So one of my favorite ways to check the wind is to use this uh, dead down wind wind detector. It's basically baby powder and it shows the wind and the direction at any given time. Now the reason this is important is because when my body is checking the wind, I can't get all of the nuances and sometimes in valleys, in certain situations, the wind can change direction really rapidly. In fact, it can swirl and it gives me a really uh, intimate sense of exactly what the wind is doing. As you can tell from that example, it just 
moved from this direction to this direction in less than 20 seconds. For duck hunters, a novel, fun, unique way to utilize the duck is using your down feathers that you get off of the animal to check the wind while you're hunting for big game like deer. I try and see hunting as a metaphor for life. And just as you might hunt trying to do your best to have good wind and still not succeed, the same is true in our day-to-day -day life. We can do everything in our power to do our best, and yet things outside of our control can still trip us up. In such situations, whether we're hunting or whether in our lives, the only recourse is to get up and try again. Find an animal, specifically before the animal knows where I am, and then I set up where I think it's gonna be. And as you can see there, there's a man with a surfboard. 